Um, hi, I'm Dalal Nafisi. I am the founder of uh, Manifesto 13. Um, this is a place that I created uh, about three years ago and um, it was mostly because I found it hard to um, find a space in Kuwait that would cater to uh, the artistic needs of adults and children as well. And um, I have a, a daughter who is extremely artistic and this, it, she inspired me to start this program which um, focuses on art education and also social awareness. Um, so we have a very interesting, diverse program. Um, we teach the history of art, we teach um, uh, a lot of theory and we teach kids to understand critique um, also, how to use their art to uh, help society and think of others around them who are um, in need, uh, such as other kids in need of education or healthcare. Um, so it is. It has been a very interesting uh, three years, and I, I'm excited that we're just we're just getting started. Honestly, when we first started, I was thinking of um, of how I I learned art in university, and I wanted to find a way to apply it here. It was extremely non-traditional, um, and that's really hard to find in the region. Actually, um, I think we tend to focus on technique in this region and forget about the content and the history. Um, so when we have facilitators come in, um, I, I, we just expect them, even if they don't have a degree in art education, it's it's all about um, their thought process, how they look at art, how they think it should be taught and uh, it's it's really, um, it's hard to find people who are passionate uh, about art in this part of the world because a lot of people had to leave that behind and find traditional jobs to survive and and keep going and so we it's challenging to find facilitators I teach the majority of the classes for the Arts Foundation program uh, but I've been extremely lucky um, we have facilitators teaching uh, several um, other programs such as silversmithing, uh, we have a pre-college program for teenagers which helps them create their uh, portfolios for university application um, and that's that's huge for me to feel that we have such an awesome team right now after th only three years. Um, I, I look forward to just meeting more people and getting them on board also so I think it's, uh, it's, it's fun. We have an art foundation program that uh, is for the younger generation, so from seven years old onwards. And um, the art foundation program is composed of about nine levels. Um, they have right now we have opened about five levels, um, and um, we look forward to opening four more, hopefully by next year. Um, the other programs, other than the teenage uh, pre-college uh, design fundamentals. We also offer sculpture for adults, we offer uh, printmaking uh, classes, uh, silversmithing um, and a lot of um, private classes also that people can, for example, ask for and we would find an artist who would be able to teach them within the amount of time that uh, is required to acquire the skill. Um, so it's, it, and we're lucky that we have a great group of artists that we're in touch with and they come in and teach um, a lot of the terms uh, in the past, uh, I mean they've taught in the past few years.
We're trying to make kids more compassionate. We're trying to get them to to be more uh, active citizens and um, just give back in their own way. One of the, the things that we really try hard to achieve every term, so and our terms are about 15 weeks long, um, after the 15 weeks, um, whatever the topic that we have focused on during that term, let's say uh, it had to do with uh, the, the importance of educating girls around the world, um, they, the kids during the term understand the, the subject matter, might be introduced to guest, uh, visitors that would talk to them about how they're combating uh, certain social issues and how they're helping uh, the education of girls and after that the kids from their inspiration they would create a final piece for their exhibition. During the exhibition we usually have a silent auction of which uh, we raise funds to donate to uh, the specific organizations that we are um, that we would focus on during the term. So so far we've worked with uh, the Kuwaiti Red Crescent uh, Society um, we've worked with Girl Rising, which is an international organization. We've also donated to um, the Asian University for Women. One of the most fun projects uh, that we worked on was with um, a refugee school uh, in Lebanon um, on the Syrian borders. Um, they, it's called Beit el Yasmin, um, home of Jasmine. Uh, they are a group of nine individuals who live in Kuwait. They're Syrian and some of them are Kuwaiti uh, Syrian and they were able to uh, raise funds from just um, cooking and selling their food and they were able to build a school uh, to host uh, refugee kids and give them lunches and, and uh, uniforms and, and it was so fascinating. Their story and their achievement was so amazing um, and we were so lucky that they would come by to our studio to meet each one of our classes and explain what they do. Uh, we were able to um, create projects that we, were, that we sold and, uh, uh, and donated the money to their schools. Uh, we were also able to get our kids to communicate with the kids in, in Beit el Yasmin uh, school. Uh, they wrote letters to them and sent videos back and forth. So it was really a very touching um, beautiful experience. For I think it's really sad that over um, the years uh, art has, has taken a back seat in schools um, and uh, even music, I mean, they, uh, a lot of the private schools have also uh, tried to lessen the amount of art and music that the kids are exposed to because of um, time. Uh, schools have more students, there's less time um, to, uh, to keep up with all the lessons that they have to take, especially kids who are from Kuwait who have to take uh, certain subjects based on the government requirements, they won't be able to take to explore their options in um, in uh, the arts and music. Um, so it's always an elective, and I find that absurd because it is one of the most important uh, uh, methods of teaching kids. Um, how to explore the other sides of their minds that are not academic. The, uh, there, we have kids who come to me every term. I have parents telling me that their kids, for example, are not doing good in school or they're struggling. And it's almost like shameful, but it's, it's sad because these kids are so artistic and it is confused with being um, uh, you know, unable to cope academically is, is, is very much confused with, with not being intelligent enough. And it's, it's shocking in 2016 that we're still talking about this, that we still don't understand that the visual arts and all kinds of fine arts are, uh, are so essential to our growth. And there are kids who have such an immense talent that is just ignored and they can graduate and go on to college not knowing that they have this beautiful gift 
because nobody understood that that's what they were good at. We don't have time these days. Everyone is so attached to uh, technology and their phones and the iPads. And, and when they come in here and they have two hours of just using their hands, which is it's a basic human uh, need. It's just a, a human instinct to be able to use your hand to do something, create something that is beautiful and or not beautiful, but just the experience, the sensory experience in itself allows you to expand your mind. Um, it's something that I'm very passionate about and I find it um, essential to keep educating people, to allow their kids to explore these things. It's not, um, it's, it really is not much. You just have to give them some paper, some pens and let them be and not expect them, every child to be an academic uh, or someone who's going to graduate to be a doctor or a physicist. Um, artists are essential to the growth of society. We actually don't have that many artists in Kuwait. As much as we are getting better and more, there's more awareness, but we, don't, we lost that. It was here in the 50s. It was here in the 60s. It was, it, there was this awareness and then it was squashed. And we are still in this period of really no, no appreciation for the arts. Um, and I look forward to seeing more of the growth that's happening these days um, and the generations that are to come.
I was very blessed to have um, extremely um, interesting parents that are extremely artistic and creative and uh, both of them really always encouraged me because I, I, I just w always wanted to draw or paint and explore different mediums. Um, because my father is also an, an amazing I think he's amazing, uh, but a very hidden gem. Um, he always encouraged me to to get better, and always made me practice and practice. Uh, he was, you know, provided me with the ability to go and learn different schools and universities. And um, during my childhood, it was a lot of reading. He would read to me a lot of. Uh, different uh, about tell me about different artists and uh, the masters especially that's what his favorite um you know the favorite discussions were about monet or degas or vincent van gogh and so i i developed an obsession and uh, i think that took me uh well into university and then uh, i was trained to be an interior architect. Uh, I worked as an interior architect for about 13 years and uh, after I had my daughter I thought it was the right time for me uh, to to start this place. So one of the most interesting things I was introduced to was a talk, uh, a TED talk by Sir Ken Robinson and um, I became obsessed with um, his view on the importance of uh, arts in, uh, in the education system in, in our schools. And I understood at that point that this is what I was supposed to do. I had to do this. I had to start Manifesto and I had to give kids who are extremely visual and kids who are interested in the arts a place that they can come to and meet kids who are the same, uh, 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 who have the same um, views and the same interests and uh, give them the chance to to just expand their social circles and see that they're not alone it has been really fantastic seeing how kids from different schools come here and they just they all have this one thing in common they just want to keep creating and, it, and they inspire each other and you can totally see the growth every term and it's, that is definitely one of uh, a very satisfying uh, experience for me. Manifesto is, uh, is more of a, a place that um, kids who are enrolled here can come every day. They feel like it's their home. Uh, they walk around barefoot and they can have, you know, uh, uh, just time to think. Um, I'm extremely um, sure uh, that we are definitely not um, a, a traditional uh, place. We have our our quirky ways of uh, of uh, approaching the art education, and and a lot of people might not understand it. But we are so happy with the growth that the kids um, that you see in the kids' artwork. Uh, freedom of choice, freedom of expression. Uh, gives you an opportunity to find yourself and find your creative, um, uh, I don't know, your, your, your everything that you want to try out, you can try out and eventually as you grow older you can hone your skills, learn more techniques and I think that's the difference uh, in, uh, in bringing in kids that en enroll here, that they have much more freedom and uh, and they get to understand things in a different way.
So my name is Badir Al Gabandi. Really, really like it because seeing my friends and all that inside manifesto just makes it feel like it's kind of like my home. I love to draw here because I really like drawing and that's what this is made for. Doing art, like I really like to do. Sometimes I actually want to create something in my head. I see, see it perfectly in my head. When I try to do it, it ends up not really perfect like I was thinking, but it's, I, and it was, but it turns out to be very good, but not perfect. So you put all that, you take a leaf and then you take one of these you, you write what you're grateful for and then you take a pen and then you put it on the tree so and everyone sees it. I can't. It's hard to write. See? They so Someone wrote, I am thankful for my Mao. Mo, what is that? Having a good home and a very nice family. And I'm lucky to have like a family that really cares. And I'm also thankful for having everything I need to survive every day. My name is Amn al Hassan. In the Manifesto 13, I create different types of artworks that um, people made. Um, like the pyramid, I just make it smaller. I'm standing in next to a gratitude tree that you write things you're proud of. One of them wrote, I'm, I hope that the plan, I hope that the planet don't be polluted and there's some racism. I'm grateful for my family because they're always with me whenever I need them. I love it, I feel like it's my home.